you know, I'm not really sure why I'm making this video. Um, but I've been thinking about doing it a lot, so I figured I might as well just do it this time. Uh, so Marvel announced a while ago that they're doing a reboot. Whatever you want to think about that it's really being. But basically what it means is they have license to undo a bunch of the stuff that's been happening in comics. Pretty much anything they want and like change sort of the starting point or the backstory of basically any one of their characters to fit a newer modern story. It can be as true to the original or as far from it as they want, I imagine. Um, I have a lot of thoughts about that, but I'm going to talk about one today specifically. Um, that's how I think they need to change Spider-Man. Uh, full disclosure, Spider-Man is probably my favorite superhero, just in general. Even in the wake of uh, Marvel Studios and how much I love the, the film adaptations and how Captain America in the films is my favorite character. Uh, Spider-Man, long for a long time, let's just say, has been my my favorite superhero since the cartoon. Uh, I never really paid for comics because I'm broke, but you know his storylines always matter to me. And I've yes, I've disliked a lot of what his recent stuff has been for sure, but uh, that's not to say that I still don't have a fandom for Spider-Man and on the whole. Uh, so I don't want you to feel like I'm some kind of weird, forcibly progressive hater when I suggest this is what I think Spider-Man needs to be. I'm just, I'm just saying, like, they're sitting on this gold mine, I don't think they get it. Well, they might, I don't know what their plan is yet. But if their plan isn't this, then I don't think they get it. Um, so, we got two interesting things that have happened the past couple years with Spider-Man. Uh, one very recently. The first would be Miles Morales. This the, this the everyone's hot topic, like, in the Ultimate Marvel Universe, which is separate from the main Marvel comics, if you don't know anything about that. Uh, Peter Parker dies, and Miles Morales is a young, uh, half-black, half-Hispanic teen who also acquires spider powers and becomes Spider-Man. Uh, very popular with a lot of people, very unpopular with a lot of other people, such as the way of things unfortunately. But, you know, so, Miles Morales. He's a pretty interesting character. Uh, the other thing that happened recently was uh, the thing called Spider-Gwen. So part of leading up to this whole mm, reboot thing, all the Marvel universes are, like, colliding. There's a big Spider-Man related event having to do with it. Uh, and one of the alternate universes featured a Gwen Stacy who was spider-powered instead of Peter Parker. She became Spider-Woman, but her comic and her universe is generally referred to as Spider-Gwen because there's enough spider Woman, and it's just really... It's mimetic to call her Spider-Gwen uh, because of who she is and how that makes sense to people. I really love Spider-Gwen and a lot of other people do. Her costume is amazing. Her backstory is tragic and interesting. It's taking Gwen Stacy and giving her a role that is more interesting than anything we've seen out of her in decades. Like, even modern stuff that's tried to bring her back is the intelligent scientist. Okay, but either you make her a love interest and she is the love interest, or you kill her. Or you do both. Looking at you, Amazing Spider-Man 2. Looking at you. But... What's interesting is that we've got that now. We've got Miles Morales and we got Peter Parker. We've got three big characters with spider powers that are all think people people want to read about them. All characters that people want to see. I think from what they've said, Ultimate Marvel's ending this Marvel reboot, I think. Don't don't, if, if I'm wrong, and Ultimate Marvel's totally not ending at all, like I'm totally mistaken, I guess leave a comment, not, you know, because YouTube and things, but if, if Ultimate Marvel is ending like I think it is, then it's clear they're going to move Miles into six into the main universe. That's, that's what they're saying, is that there's not going to be 616 and Ultimate, like, the universes are going to collapse in itself and we're going to get a new one. 
So here's what I think they're going to do. This is just my suggestion, my pitch. If I was an, a writer, an editor, whatever at Marvel, I had to go up to the top dog and they were like, Alex, what Spider-Man going to be after after this reboot? Like, we're building up all this stuff. What What's our our main Spider-Man comic, our flag line? Like, this, the Amazing Spider-Man, let's say. that You know, they do a new number one, Amazing Spider-Man. What is the story? So here it is. Most of the stuff that you've known in 616 of Peter Parker is the same. He still, so Uncle Ben dies, inspires him to him Spider-Man after he gets the powers. Uh, he meet you cut out Gwen Stacy entirely, and you'll see why. Uh, he winds up meeting Mary Jane, they fall in love, they get married, they have a kid, and here's where the point of divergence, I think, needs to come in. Uh, after that, Peter Parker winds up revealing to Aunt May that he's Spider-Man for a long time, and between him and MJ and Aunt May and their new child, who doesn't die like she did in the original comics, instead she gets to live on, who is May, Mayday Parker, who would who grows up to become Spider Girl in the in an alternate universe comic that's also very popular, but um, in this one she would just be a little kid because she's you know a little kid. Um, it, he gets convinced by them that it's actually responsible for him to step down as Spider Man and retire. That you know, May and May says, "Listen, I knew you know I knew your uncle better than anyone, and you know." Great power comes great responsibility. Yes, you did have a responsibility to use that power to protect people, but it is irresponsible for you to do that and then also have a family. And your family needs you. You know, you've gone this far with you know MJ. You and MJ are in love, and you have a child, and you're married, and that's just the way that is. It would be irresponsible of you to keep doing that. And there's and there's other heroes, there's other people in New York City even, who are superheroes, who are keeping it safe, besides Spider-Man. You can retire, you can step down now and keep your family safe. And so Peter does. Peter makes that decision. But he, he regrets it, and he always feels guilty for abandoning them. And it's this, this struggle with him. So fast forward a few years. Uh, he's no longer a photographer, because can't really make money off of photographing Spider-Man if no one is Spider-Man. Uh, and he takes one of the jobs that he did take in the comics very popular, which is becoming a high school chemistry teacher. And he has two students. Guess who those two students are? Here's a hint. And by hint, I mean I'm telling you. It's Miles Morales and Gwen Stacy. Gwen Stacy is de-aged a bit to be Miles Morales' age in comparison to Peter Parker. So they're both teenagers, and Peter's probably in his late 20s or 30s, whatever, you know, early to mid 30s at the latest. With a kid and with a wife and being a retired Spider-Man that no one knows about. So here's where things get silly. There's only one flaw in my idea, and it's, it's this. Uh, Peter Parker and Miles Morales are on like a field trip, like some kind of science field trip, and Peter knows Miles, he kind of trusts him, he thinks he's a pretty good kid. Uh, Miles maybe isn't the best, the best science student, but like Peter respects him and sees that he's going through stuff. Like, I'm not super up to date, but I know that he's like he lost his mom in the Ultimate Story, so like he has problems with his dad. So like, can incorporate all that. So Miles is a good kid with some with some problems, and Peter can recognize that more than anyone, given that he grew up without parents. So Miles gets into some accident on this field trip. And the stupid part about this, that, like I said, it, this makes very little sense for you just kind of have to kind of have to figure it out, and that's what I would lead up, leave up to actual professional writers. Uh, one way or another, Peter has to give Miles a blood transfusion. They're the same blood type, that we're just going to let, you know, make them both some generic blood type to make this, like, a coincidence that's easy for us to use to create this plot line. Sorry about that. Um, and so Peter has to give him a blood transfusion, knowing full well that it will give him the spider powers, but he knows that, like, if they get him to the hospital and wait for blood transfusion, he's probably going to die. Or, if they can even get him fast enough, it won't save him. But Peter's blood will, because it's got the power that's going to give him, you know, superpowers and going to help him survive and be more durable. 
So then, you know, once Miles starts exhibiting spider power, Peter takes him aside and is basically like, hey, I saved your life, but by the way, I was Spider-Man and I have spider powers. That's a thing that happened. And Miles, of course, freaks out, but your storyline for this comic gets to be Peter Parker mentoring a young Miles Morales and convincing him you should be Spider-Man because I feel really bad that there isn't a Spider-Man, but I could be Spider-Man very easily when I was a teenager because it was a lot less irresponsible of me because I didn't have a family back then. Just like you don't have a wife and a kid because you're 15, 14, whatever age Miles is whatever age you want to make him. And so you have this story where you can have Peter. You can have Peter as Spider- as what, who used to be Spider-Man, with spider powers, but is in the background as the mentor character. At any point you can bring him out and put him into a fight and like force him to temporarily put on the suit again and like he's always in the background for those of us who love Peter Parker. And I, I do love Peter Parker. His character is dear to my heart. But we are we are out of stories with him. I think. I, I don't see, like, the road they're going on now that they are recognizably ending with this reboot. It's not interesting. It's not, you know, since he got his body back from uh, Dr. Octopus, there hasn't been much to care about. It's like, okay, he's just fighting his villains. He has love interests, but then he doesn't. He's Spider-Man, like, we're done. He, he, he can only write about a character for so long before you run out of ideas. This would be a place we've never seen him before. He's the mentor. He's coaching. He's in the background. You know, him and MJ and their daughter are sitting and supporting Miles in all this. You know, knowing that Miles is Spider-Man. And um, then we get focus on Miles, who's younger and more interesting. Now that you, you might be thinking, Alex, you brought up uh, a Gwen earlier. Why is that? Well, currently Spider-Gwen is actually getting her own comic series before this reboot. I'm hoping, I'm kind of assuming based on its popularity, that's going to continue after the reboot. If not, uh, this sort of how important this is and how big a deal this is uh, will be different. But here's what I think about Gwen. So Gwen is Peter's prize student. She's brilliant. She is in like an ace at science and all of her studies. She's got a very strong sense of justice because of her dad. And so when when Stacy accidentally stumbles on Peter talking to Miles about being Spider-Man, Gwen thinks she's been slighted. She thinks her mentor, her favorite science professor, chose some punk kid in her eyes, not not like a racist thing, just like that he's not like a, a science genius or he's not some like beacon of justice like she is like it's just some kid gets to be Spider-Man, gets to have these powers, and that he confided in, in this kid and not her, even though they have a really good relationship as student and teacher. And that pisses her off. So when Stacy, we get to show how cool she is at science. She figures out a way by examining maybe some blood of Peter that she finds to replicate the experiment and infect herself with the spider. She probably won't have Peter's blood because then she could just do it that way. But, or maybe she or maybe she can do it that way too if you don't want her to do the experiment. Either way, one way or another she figures it out and starts vigilanceing it up as Spider Gwen slash Spider Woman, I guess, in comics. She wouldn't call herself Spider Gwen. So, and then suddenly Spider-Man's got this Spider Woman running around and they don't know who it is at first. And so you could have you could have two comics, one where you know Spider Woman is a background character in Spider Man. Then she also has her own comic where you follow her adventures actually from her perspective, and they would cross over all the time. And eventually Peter and Miles figure out it's her, and they like you know either yeah, they're going to work together because they're both good guys, but Gwen's still sort of angry, and you can have a lot of interesting conflict between all these characters. And you know, like I said, you can always always have a storyline, tons of storylines where Peter gets involved and Peter has to fight, Peter has to do stuff, Peter's still a major character. We're not going to abandon Peter Parker, he's, he's a touchstone, he's a cultural icon. Everyone, you know, he's a household name. 
but uh, him as Spider-Man fighting, there aren't a lot of stories in that anymore, are there? I mean, I don't think so. But, I think there is with this. So, if you're watching this Marvel, and you're not, if you are, or if someone is, and this isn't your plan, I really hope it's it's even better than this, because if this is just going to be some reboot where Miles Morales kind of exists somewhere, and then Peter Parker is Spider-Man, and it's business as usual, and him and MJ still aren't together, you choose not to use this to somehow erase one more day, because by the way, in case you didn't realize the thing I wasn't addressing in all of this is that this completely erases one more day, which is 100% intentional on my part, because that storyline is stupid. It's very stupid. We all know it's stupid. We've known it's stupid for a very, very long time. But I think it's important that we recognize that Peter Parker is popular, Miles Morales is popular, Gwen Stacy is popular, as Spider-Gwen, specifically. We can marry all three of these things into one idea. It's not hard. That, this is this is the thing about all the comics. I can, I can talk to you about my ideas for X-Men, too, but I don't think they're as interesting or as fleshed out. I could talk to you about things I dislike about DC that I think DC needs to do, but it all boils down to the same thing, which is that they ignore the easy way to break these stories because they're worried about canon and like longtime fans. Longtime DC fans have dealt with reboots for a long time, and Marvel fans are ready for this reboot, and I haven't seen too much outrage. Maybe I'm just on the wrong parts of the internet. But the point is, you have an opportunity to add some flavor and some diversity to these stories without getting rid of anything. It's just adding stuff. It's just adding in more characters to the story. Spider-Man can handle that. Peter Parker, he, you know, he can run the story on his own for so long, but now it's kind of boring. You can add in these other characters. It really, really means something. But if you don't want to, if you just want to write the same old story, you know, that's up to you.